All right, so that's part one. What I need, I, I got so much shit. So much shit going on. We're gonna take this box. We're just gonna throw all these wires in this box. So we removed the board, we're going on part two. We're gonna desolder some wires off the tube sockets. I think I'm going to use, reuse these tube sockets. I'm going to retension them. I do believe. All right. So let me clean my solder gun and we're going to go through here. We're going to use a solder sucker. We're going to heat this up. chunk stuck in there. Shit. There it is. Sorry, I had to throw that away. Keep a little solder on there for shits and giggles. Now normally I don't wear rubber gloves and there's a reason I wear rubber gloves when I'm working on this kind of shit. And I'll tell you why. I watched a show not too long ago, it was, um, I don't remember, it wasn't a show, it was an article, how somebody was working on a, uh, a Grateful Dead organ, and the tech, the tech, uh, started tripping, they found somebody had dumped a vial of liquid acid in it, and that is not cool, man, I don't want to be tripping my face off, dude. That'd be, that'd be a fucking nightmare. It'd be a 17 hour nightmare for me. I didn't get it. I did not. One socket done. We got some clogging going on in here. So what we can do, we'll take that tip off, find the screwdriver. Okay, it's a little 
It's a little screwdriver. All right. Anyway, we'll find the screwdriver after. Let's continue desoldering. So anytime you're working on this vintage kind of stuff, wear rubber gloves unless you want to trip balls. I mean, you could get, if you like tripping, I guess that would be awesome. You know, I used to eat acid when I was younger. And I do not want to go back down that rabbit hole. I've been down that rabbit hole too many times. And uh, I'm old. I don't need that kind of shit in my life. Imagine that. Sitting here and all of a sudden everything starts to go into the alternate universe. You'd be like, man, I don't, I don't feel too good. Something wrong. You wouldn't have no idea what the hell is going on probably put you in a full bone panic attack. Ah, this does not want to separate. They did it good. They did it better than the other one. So a telltale sign for me is either a parallel, which I doubt it, or a cathode follower is a when they jump the grid, actually it's a grid to grid, I think. Let's see, four or five. Yeah, so this is a this is just a paralleled stage. I was looking to see what was up. What's going on there? So what we need to do is just snip this here. Now, if it was a grid going into a plate, that would be a cathode follower. Like we're gonna look right here. This is a grid going in to a cathode. One, two, three, cathode, two, cathode. These cathodes were tied together all right, so this was just a parallel tube. I already said that before. And it just definitely. Answered that anyway. It must be the reverb tube because it looks like it goes to this transformer. Check it out on the schematic. Yes, this takes some time. Um, I think I'm gonna leave this hooked up, the vibrato. I would like to adjust it so that it's a little bit more neat. We'll do that when we start building the amp back.
right now. Come on. Come on. There we go. I gotta clean my solder gun. What's going on here? Another one. Another one. Another one down, another one by to dust. We got a piece of solder stuck in the center of that tube. I'm, so, I'm sorry if I'm hurting your guys' souls right now. I'm not destroying the amp. Again, to you guys it may be. I think I'm going to redo the power section too. Because I, I have to redo the ground anyway. I mean... If I'm going to do it, I might as well do the whole thing the way that I I see it. I was just thinking how far I really want to dive into it. Because the power section already is done, but I already got to redo the bias. So... I don't... I see the grid resistors are hooked to the tubes. I'd rather not have grid resistors hooked to the tube. I'd like to leave pin six free. Pin six on a EL34 or a KT88 or a 6L6 or a KT77 or 66 or a 6505 or 51, 51, 5181, whatever they are. Five, I don't know what those ones are. I hate them. They're all... Pin six is not used. So I like to leave them unused. And whatever I use there, I'll actually mount on the turret board with a wire. Now they say the closer the grid resistor is to the grid, the better it is, and I agree. But I have not run into any issues by putting a wire. So. Yes, and this is monotonous. Same old bullshit. Just another day. Just going down the line. This is the last preamp tube. There are going to be a couple things here when we start taking some stuff off. Like, I don't really know if I want to even go that far. I know I want to rewire these heaters, but I don't know how far I want to go. So when I get done doing this preamp, I'm going to suck the solder. And here we go again, cathodes tied together. There's three tubes of cathodes were tied together. One, they probably used like an 820 ohm resistor there. I will not do that, by the way. I will be using separate. If Fender biased it at 1.5K, but used an 800 ohm resistor, 
I will be using a 1.5K resistor on each one individually. And I know they it's unbypassed, so they didn't have very much gain. I don't know if it's unbypassed. I haven't really looked at the schematic, but probably isn't. I know they had the 25 UFs going to almost every cap. That's something that's going to be changed out completely. All right. So, that is done. So the black wire from the transformer is going to be negative. And that's here. Why am I taking that off? I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if I just want to replace the board or I'm going to do it all. Yes, because I have ground I have ground issues over here that need to be severely addressed. So this whole thing has to be taken off. For the last two minutes in my brain, I've been deciding, you know, what to do here. So the black is on the ground lugged. What the fuck? And that ground lug, see, they had the black going to the ground lug here, but then this ground lug is tied to the chassis, which is stupid. That's dumb. I mean, yeah, it works, but again, introduces loops. It can introduce a loop. So Mr. Jax, let me see here. Seventeen minutes. Oh, what are we gonna do? Take these off? Absolutely. I want to make a new faceplate too. Cause it's not gonna be a twin reverb anymore. Will it act like one? No. It'll be better. Will it have the clean tones that a twin has? Yep. It'll have more headroom. So what it will have is more headroom. It'll be cleaner. And less hum. And uh just going to be a better overall product. I hope that's the plan. So this one, what did they do? That one they just shoved all the way through here. It's a long lead. Red, red, yellow, 220K, it looks like. I'm not sure. Come on. Or suck that out. It looks like they uh, sometimes they do a better job of putting components on than others. 
um, Mr. Costello, you're the guy that built this amp. You did a shitty job. They didn't wrap any of them. They just put them in the hole and heated up solder and look. I mean, they, they bend them over a little bit. I'm going to leave that resistor right there because I want to measure it and see how bad it's drifted. I'm just curious. Mm. Oh, it comes apart here. Mm. Sorry about the camera movement. Maybe I'll find it. I'll find another box for all these parts. Green wire is positive. I hate 6L6s, man. I'm thinking about buying a new output transformer and putting EL34s in it. But then I would probably need to buy a new power transformer because I don't think the current draw would take it. So it's gonna be stuck with six L6s, I have a feeling. All right, okay. Where are we? Okay, we're all gonna do next. I wanna Move this back over this way. Let's focus it right. Maybe move this over a little bit so there's some room. I never did find my my screwdriver. We'll look over here. I know. I know I put it here somewhere. Cause I was like, dude, we're gonna be using it. My chopsticks on the floor. I don't know where the screwdriver went. I don't really need it. I'll find a little drill bit. I'll just use a drill. And clean this out. Turn that fan on. Sorry if the noise bothers you. I need some fresh air. 
what I need. So I'm not going to show you me, I showed you me desolder in one of them, I'll do all of them, but I'm just going to keep on removing stuff right now. I'm shooting for the, aiming for the stars like Buzz Lightyear. messed up because I just literally put the switch in. So let's look here. That would be the power switch. This is a standby switch. That's a standby switch. So the power switch, the white wire, so the black wire is going to be your hot. Okay. All that's coming out. I just redid all this too. To get rid of the and the death cap under it. If you're going to do something, do it right. Go big. Or go home. So I'm looking here, there's the HT. We got two reds, which is gonna be the hot. The blue and red, which is going to be the bias. The black and white are mains, and it looks like the greens are 6.3. I don't even know if I can get this out of here. So this build is going to take a couple weeks because I'll have to order parts and it takes a week to get parts because they come from all over the country. Tube Depot is like a four or five day deal. Electri Antique electronic supply takes a week. I live, on, live in New York so parts connection in Canada comes in like a day which is really cool they don't have a lot of the stuff that I need come on there we go there we go 
film. I'm gonna use a new. I'm gonna use, get a new IEC cord. And cut it. So I know that's primary. It's my primary. We will wind it back. That's my mains. My HT mains. And that's what I was talking about, this this pot. This bias pot, it's a balance pot. It's not a bias pot. It just balances between the two sides. It's not very ideal to individually, you know, bias. So what I'm gonna do here is this. I'm gonna undo this one, because this is the bias tap and then not even gonna fuck around getting rid of that guy so I'm disconnected because I'll make my own ground but what I am gonna do is this I am gonna take my splicer right now because I don't know which one to center tab for what. So this center tab and this center tab What the fuck? I'm trying to figure this out. So they had this one centered. Uh, there's no way it would work with that one, but I don't get it. So this one's just all left alone. It doesn't have any continuity. We put it on ohms and see what happens. I touch this one. I have nothing. That's an issue. I may have to replace the power transformer. Let me tie this. No, that ain't gonna do no good. This wire right here went to ground. It was out of the transformer. Now it should be a center tap then. 
That means it should be a center tap for the HT or the bias wire. But when I hook, this is a center tap, definitely. I have actually continuity of three ohms there. 11 ohms there. Ten. So look, it's saying that this, this is the center tap for these here. I don't know what this is. What I could do is put power in here and test the voltages. That's what I'll do later. Because I don't know why this would have, this isn't hooked up to anything unless less let me see I come to here so we got extra room let's cut this heater wire it may be a, vi a five volt and they grounded it I don't know because I know the old transformers that they used they sometimes used them for the rectifiers and I don't think that this transformer has a center tap for the heater. It looks to be lifted with 100 ohm resistors for an artificial center tap. So, nothing. This one's just standing alone. That one just stands alone. I have no continuity, and I mean, one wire doesn't never do nothing. That's my knowledge. Alright. It's a bummer. So already, I don't like it that the bias shares a bias shares a, uh, a common center tap with the high HT because if the fuse goes it could backflow I don't know moving on What I do have, though, outside is an old Hammond power transformer with a thousand volts. Would be perfect to do a 200 watt KT88 twin reverb because a hundred's not loud enough, right, guys? saving that for myself. Get in there. Now you don't have to, you could reuse these wires. There's nothing wrong with these wires at all. I'm not gonna use them though, I'm putting brand new ones in. So it's gonna be a brand new build. Kind of. Some stuff I'll reuse, some stuff I won't. I gotta, I'll determine what I do and don't. As of right now, I'm kind of fucking confused about this transformer. We're going to figure that out in a few minutes in my next video. And 
I'm not even going to look at the schematic. I'm just going to test. Man, what's up with this? Can't get out of there. Matter of fact, it's still driving me a little bonkers. So I think we might. Yeah, we'll save that for a different video. We at 41 more. We're doing good. Just gonna clean these tube sockets up, and uh, that's it. So brown and blue is gonna be your out your plates and your output transformers here. So brown is going to this inside one, then it's running over to the outside. That's how they have it. That's your plate. Wire. Center tap was red. They must have fed the cap wires under there too. So there should only be three. I think they, these went somewhere. They, I think these are the cap wires. This is your secondary, primary. These are just different.
This is your screen grid going to six. Six is not used. We're using it as a, as a terminal strip. strip too as well for your control grid that's going to change As we look here, there's a ground for the cathode. Not good, dude. They have their own little locations. That's bad, dude. I explained this earlier of why it's bad. I will fix that too. After I'm done doing these power tubes, I'm um, these sockets here. I pretty much have it all taken care of. I'm gonna turn off the video, then I'm gonna clean all this up because there's no sense of you seeing all that shit again. I already showed you how to solder suck the terminal, so I'll do that, and then when I'm done doing that, I'll come back. We'll move on to the next step. And I'll tell you, anytime I have a power resistor, like if it's a plate resistor, maybe not a plate resistor, but a B plus dropping resistor, I'll use a metal film. We'll not use any carbon on them. It's the way I've always done it. Now, plates, I'll use carbon film. I like carbon film. Carbon comp, nah, not so much. They look cool. I think carbon comps are the coolest looking resistors in the world. They sound like sh they're so noisy. Be like Mario Bros.
So I will be taking a break though from this thing and finishing off the my other ramp. We got two more wires here. Grounds. Gotta get them off. And I am gonna just take all these components off the back panel too as well. While I'm done. So that's that. We got this section completely stripped out. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna clean these up. I might pull these out, probably will pull them out. It's easy, easier to clean them. So I'm gonna flip this over and unscrew all these. Take them out, clean them. Take all this off. Um, actually, I'll show you. I'll make another video of that. It'll be a short little video. I'll do that right now.